Hey guys, welcome back to Woods Tree Farm. I'm Phil and today is a video that comes as a result of your questions. I get uh, emails, Facebook messages, comments on the videos. There's numerous ways that people contact us with different questions. And now that we've been doing this five years, I am starting to kind of feel like I have some answers occasionally. I want to try to answer why trees might be dying. If you're trying to grow evergreens like we are, you're trying to grow Christmas trees, I have a little bit of insight. If you're trying to grow other stuff, I maybe not, don't have so much insight. But let's walk around the field, we'll find some trees that aren't alive any longer, and we'll answer some of your most common questions. Our first couple years doing this, I was pretty quick to blame the weather. And we had some extreme heat, we had some dry periods, and I, like I said, I was pretty quick to blame the weather for some of our early losses. Looking back, I don't know if that was necessarily the case, but let me show you this one thing that I wish I knew when we first started this, and that is just a little test that you can do to figure out if your soil drains well or not. And when we're talking about soil drainage, and I didn't know this when we started, we're talking about how water permeates through the soil under the surface. And uh, our entire property here is sloped, and I always thought, oh, our soil drains really well. Uh, you know, the next day after the rain, the surface is usually dry in most places. We don't have an issue with drainage. But it's actually under the surface, and there's an easy test that you can do to figure out if your soil drains well, because if it doesn't drain well, you're probably going to have some challenges growing pretty much any variety of Christmas tree. All right, so this test starts off, we're just gonna dig a like, figure one cubic foot hole. You know, it's about one foot by one foot by one foot. It doesn't, the dimensions don't really matter that much. But what we're trying to do is get down uh, at, as deep as your tree's roots would go, which is going to be 10 to 12 inches for most types of trees. So we wanna dig us a nice hole. Then we're gonna go get us a bucket of water and we're gonna fill that hole with water. All right, with that water test, we're gonna come back to that near the end of the video, but basically it's a time-based thing. You wanna see how quickly that water drains. And depending on who you talk to or what source you're reading up on, the, the suggested time kind of varies, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. All right, so we're gonna walk through the field here real quick. We're gonna look at some trees that have some issues. We're gonna look at some trees that are dead. I'm gonna kind of walk you through kind of the diagnostic process, if you will. If someone reaches out to me and says, hey, why are my trees dying? These are kind of some of the questions that I want to answer or things that I want to look into a little bit further. All right, so one of the things that I want to know is how long has it been since the trees have been planted? Because in some cases, someone reaches out and says, hey, we've got a tree or we've got a, you know, a set of trees that uh, they're just not looking great. They look like they're going to die. What do you think? And if they've been recently planted, they may have been shocked during that planting time and you might see some brown needles for, for a period. I wait until the trees are completely dry and crispy before I pull them, so you might just wait. So if it's a brand new tree, it might just be transplant shock, the roots may have been damaged or dried out prior to planting, and that's something that you want to pay attention to when you're planting new trees, is uh, make sure you're keeping the roots moist, you're not letting them sit out in the sun and the wind and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll probably have more trees die off it, during that first year, maybe even during the first few months if you expose them to that while you're planting. Since we're talking about planting, the next thing we're gonna get into is how the tree was planted. Let's assume the trees didn't sit out. Um, you know, maybe you've gotten through your first year and maybe in year two, they're dead. Well, there's something that I've heard repeatedly from growers and that is if you plant your tree too high, it's gonna die plant it too low, it won't grow. There is a sweet spot of the depth that you want to get your seedlings in the ground. And new growers, we did, we were definitely guilty of this. I continue to find trees that die off in their second, third, fourth year, and you go and pull them, and you can see that they were either too high or too low. All right, this one might actually be one of our examples. All right, so in this one here, so a couple things on this one actually. One, it, it may have gotten eaten by grubs. I don't see any small feeder roots uh, still on this plant. And the other thing is um, there's a little bit of kind of like a root rot type evidence going on here where 
if kind of the outer part of the root kind of slides off easily and you get that lighter color in there then um, you know that's some evidence of some root rot I'm also seeing this right here is some that white stuff is some aphid activity so kind of a couple things going for this one it also looks like it was planted a little bit too deep so its root zone starts all the way down here it was planted up to here so this thing has kind of a, a number of things going for it what exactly killed this tree I don't know maybe it was too deep maybe grubs ate its roots maybe it has a little root rot thing going on maybe these aphids aren't any good I don't know we got a combination of things but <laughs> luck ran out for this tree this last year this was planted I think in 2019 or 2020 so I mean we've got a couple years invested into this tree and it took until now for us to realize it's not gonna make it but that's what you're looking for when you're gonna go pull a tree out of the ground that hasn't survived you're looking for some sort of issue or damage that caused that tree to die that one happened to have this is just sheer luck that one happened to have several issues. So we'll go ahead and uh, look for another one here. Another really common one, and I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if we find it today, is mechanical damage. You could nick the edge of your tree with a mower or with a string trimmer, or there could be some other type of exterior damage, usually from like uh, rodents or rabbits or something eating on the bark. And if something comes along and damages the bark and the trunk of the tree right there at ground level, that's likely to kill the tree. All right, so here's one where he pulled out. And, and you look at that and you might say, oh, well, it's got, it's got J root. So that's where it was planted and its main tap root went down in a J. I don't think this one was so severe that that caused this tree to die, but I could be wrong. There's no other physical damage on this tree to speak of. I don't see any evidence of aphids. There is, you know, this where I said like the feeder roots are all gone. So maybe some grubs ate on this, but there's still a few. They didn't consume it completely. And the roots do have evidence of kind of the, uh, the root rot that I described where you can easily slide off kind of the outer casing of the root um, so I don't know this might be a candidate to get tested and see if we have issue with Phytophthora which is certainly a possibility you got to scout around your trees and just keep an eye on them and look for things that are different and unusual because there are depending on which species of tree you're dealing with a variety of different issues that Christmas trees can have that may require some kind of treatment so here's kind of an example here in a Norway spruce. This tree is just starting to, you know, its buds are just starting to break. It generally looks healthy from here up, but down on the lower branches, we see a lot of bare or very thin branches. So branches that have lost their needles. And there's a couple different causes for that. And I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert on this specific issue, but this is an example of something that you need to look out for on your trees. Spruce, is are known for spider mites they're also known for needle casts and uh, after a long period of time uh, both will cause needles to be lost so this is something that requires further uh, exploration all of our trees actually did just get sprayed this week with a fungicide uh, particularly for the needle cast and the spruce and um, then our cypress also get a fun fungicide application so if we have an issue with needle cast we've already done kind of a preventative spray on that they'll get another treatment here in a couple weeks and um, if spider mites are an issue it'll be another several weeks still before we can really identify that as the issue because we're going to be looking for those to hatch but this video like i said isn't really a uh how to fix your trees or how to prevent them from dying it's more just how to identify why your trees maybe have died and then once you've identified it you can start to do some more research you can talk to your extension office you could talk to more seasoned tree farmers you could talk to um, you know your chemical sales people whoever you could try to figure out your best course of action based on what you're able to identify
Another thing you can keep your eye out for, and this is more just kind of like a self-imposed kind of thing, if you're using chemicals for weed control in particular, you, you obviously want to be really careful you know, when you're applying those and how you're applying those because chemical burn or uh, chemical um, you know, herbicide application can absolutely kill your trees if not done correctly. So that could be something else to look out for. You know, there's kind of a theme here in some of this. There's probably just as many kind of self-imposed issues, you know, the physical damage with, uh, with equipment, the chemical damage with spraying. Um, you could be killing your own trees if you're not taking the right steps. But there's also plenty of other things, environmental things that could be killing the trees. And I think it is, um, you know, it's, it, it's going to differ on every farm and in every environment based on the trees that you're growing. And uh, now that we're down here in the section of field with the um, scotch pines, I can show you lots of issues that these things have. They have loads of issues. And I'm just starting to figure out how to identify some of them and how to deal with some of them. But man, these trees are a mess. And um, we're uh, not really planting any more of those because they um, have proven to be a bit of a challenge. All right, so there's a question I get all the time, and that is, what's the right fertilizer? Because you're, you're a new grower and you're thinking, maybe my trees are dying because they don't have the right nutrients. Well, I did make a fertilization video, and I can put a link to that in this video's description. But the real answer here is your trees are probably not dying because of lack of fertilizer. Like, I think that's probably the lowest possible reason on the list, or the least likely reason that your trees have died is because of poor soil health. Uh, if there are other evergreens on or near your property growing, odds are your soil is probably fine. But if you haven't already gotten a soil test or you didn't get a soil test before you planted, that's your first course of action is get a soil test done, uh, send it to a lab that's qualified to do soil analysis. And most um, extension offices can assist you with that. If you're in the United States, if you're not, maybe you have to find a private lab or something, but that is the way to go. And then based on your soil and based on your soil test results, you can figure out what type of fertilizer or what fertilizer mix is going to be appropriate for your trees and uh, in my situation I always thought oh, our soil is really really bad we need to do more fertilizing our first couple years we maybe killed some of our trees by overwatering and not because of fertilization and it kind of brings me back to my the very beginning of the video i we dug a hole we put some water in there and we walked back down to where that hole is we can take a look but basically if the water doesn't drain quickly enough from your soil your trees are going to drown and this is actually in a section where um we're in a little bit better shape here than elsewhere on our property this hole uh, the water has retreated about halfway And that's just in about 40 minutes since I started walking around filming this video. And uh, if we came back two hours later, it would be down a little bit more. What you really need to start to worry about is if you dig a similar size hole, eight to 12 inch hole, you fill it with water to the top and you come back four or five hours later and they're still like over halfway full of water. Um, I have areas of my property, I've done this test, I've come back the next day and there's still water in the hole that's when you probably need to be a little bit more concerned about your soil drainage and your property's ability to grow trees. There are certain types of trees that are known to do better in more wet locations. Canane firs of the fir varieties are known to be better there. Um, some of the pines, Virginia pines, white pines, they can do okay. I've got Virginia pines growing naturally across my property over there in areas that are always muddy. But this is an important test because if you think you're gonna grow traditional fir trees, for example, and your soil doesn't drain well, you're gonna have probably a really challenging time because they don't like wet feet is what they say. And um, there really aren't many other uh, Christmas trees out there that do tolerate wet feet. There's only a couple and uh, your species selection is going to be greatly limited if wet feet are what you're dealing with. So I mentioned these scotch pines have a host of different issues. 
I wouldn't even have begun to uh, kind of self-identify these issues. There are a number of resources available online and in physical form that can help you with this. One is the pest management guide um, developed by, I think, University of Michigan and USDA. And you can buy a hard copy version of it. You can download a PDF of it for free. And I'll put a link in this video's description where you can buy the, the book online. But it is a very helpful book that you can flip through and start to identify maybe what some of the issues are with your trees, particularly particularly if they are um, a result of a particular pest or disease or something like that. And every time I have contacted my um, the Virginia expert on Christmas trees um, with the Cooperative Extension Office, he always tells me, hey, the first thing I'm doing is going to this guide. So the same tool that the professionals use is available to us amateurs as well to help identify what the issues might be. So if you're in your first couple years and you've had heavy losses in your trees, don't be too discouraged. I think it's probably something a lot of new growers deal with. We certainly have here. In the last two years, our odds have improved considerably uh, for a couple reasons, but one is we're planting fewer firs that we had the heaviest losses in, and we're planting more cypress that we've had the fastest growth and the best luck with. That's part of it is the species selection. But the other part is, we're doing better with herbicide applications, we're doing better with fungicide applications, we're getting our fertilizers right, and all of that kind of stuff. And I think for anyone just starting out, that kind of stuff takes a little time, there's a little bit of a learning curve there, and everyone kind of goes through a period where they're losing some trees. Well, let me know if you think I left anything out of this video, guys. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.